Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. <laughs> here we are, folks. We're here. We're doing it. Oof. Well, somebody told me don't yell. And I know. Mic, I remember. So I panicked last minute. And I did a fire marshal bill. I know. I see these these every every comment. It, you, what, what, you, what any move you make, somebody's like, oh, uh, up, up. We're too vocal. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got nipples. Everybody's got a queef, and uh, I put them all up my ass, and it's not healthy. I mean, is there a is there a moment where the show was just? Gold, because I mean everything you shift. I, I I switch my legs. I wear pants. The the wire, the lighting. Yeah, and, can't uh, win. It, I, it's a, rough. A wise man once said, uh, "You can't please them all," uh, and that was Bill Cosby. Actually, no, that's not the quote. Oh shit, he had something like that. Something between you want between the quote? Raping. I love with the, the quote. quote. The quote is, "I don't know the secret to happiness, but the secret to failure is to try to please everybody." There it is. And I'm getting sleepy. That and shove a pill up her ass and fuck her. Right, right. But it's true. But people are different. Things are different. You know, I'm sure some guy in the 80s was watching porn and he was like, this sucks. And you're like, well, you're gay. This is a man <laughs> and a woman fucking. He's like, we like different things. Not everything has to be exactly catered for you. And that's okay. Right. That's okay. Uh huh. Um, okay. Trying to do O Canada. Oh, Didn't I think you're doing it. That sounded more like. Um, Ole, 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 ole. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, Canada's fun. I mean, Don Gavin had a great joke. Oh, Canada, yeah, I love Gav. <laughs> Canada's so boring. Even the national anthem is, oh, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Woo! I love what you. The joke is he didn't change anything. Yeah, maybe the timing a little, but that joke's right there. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's like Seinfeld's joke. Uh, I love the left turn arrow thing. He's like left turn. Okay, right. You know, good times. Yeah, he had some good stuff. He had a couple zingers back in the day. I don't even know if he does stand up anymore. Oh yeah, he hasn't really been around. Has well, he, he wrote the Pop Tart movie, the pandemic. He's gay now. Who knows? Pop Tart movie. He made a Pop Tart movie. Is it out? Not out yet, but he wrote ah. it. It's done. All right. Well, you said like it was out. That's why I, I was confused. Well, he made it. It's it's in the can. Ah, cans. Cans. We By just got to get that puppy in the distribution. I just played cans for Shelby. We're thinking about doing, tell it right in, call in. What do you think? We're thinking about doing one episode with sound bites, like yes. FM radio, where it would be like George is saying, cut it, cans. Yes. My father's gay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another one. We need that's my father's big one. gay. Sure, sure. I love it. Let's get some sample. We're, we're shock jock. We're morning zoo, baby. My father's gay has to be the funniest line ever, ever. Especially as a save. Like, no, no, hey, I'm a good guy. My father's gay. <laughs> my father's <laughs> gay. So good. What an insane poll. <laughs> Not his uncle, his nephew, his yeah. best friend. He throws his dad under the gay bus immediately just to get out of this awkward moment. My I father's love it. gay. Too good. <laughs> It's a hell of a program. Great delivery. I was thinking about this the other day. Oh. Seinfeld is on Netflix now. It's been on 19 different platforms. He makes $14 million a minute. Kramer, obviously, the famous N-word rant. Yes, Michael Richards. That's the guy's name. Kramer would never do that. He, uh, He's, you know, he's canceled, big canceled, hasn't really worked since. Mm -hmm. And yet you can have the show. Yes. On Netflix. So the, the, our cancel rules are, are all out of whack. There's no staples here. This is the show, and we're not changing it, right? Um, that's another fun clip. It's not on TV. What's well, on TV? Not yet. Thank you. Uh, boy, I love that Balaban. You see Balaban, you just get excited. I just watched Capote. That's a hell of a picture. Is that good? Oh, it's fantastic. I was working at Blockbuster when that came out. I was like, oh, I can't wait to take a bite out of that puppy, and I never did. Oh, it's a good bite. But, um, but yeah, the can I mean, the cancel, obviously, it's kooky. It's I mean, topsy turf. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Mike Tyson's got a cartoon. He's got a Broadway show. I mean, he's like, I used to knock out women and take their groceries. Yeah, and he's, I think he's got a rape charge. I went to jail, and uh, wife abuse. I mean, he was on like the Today Show right. or uh, whatever the more. You can't do that on television. Whatever show he was on 
<laughs> and, um, <laughs> he got slimed. Remember, he was with um, Robin Gibbons, and he lifted oh, his yeah. arm, and she like flinched. You yes, ever see that clip? That's right. He's like, well, I think she's like, <laughs> just like I one know. of these. Who are these women dating boxing men? I mean, it's bananas. This guy will just, I mean, we'll, we'll tell a joke off stage every now and then. Imagine him. He's just one smack, and you're through the wall. Boxing man. You sound like you're from Latvia. <laughs> it, he's uh, dating the boxing men. Boxing men. men. Yes. You killed the other fighter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, so he gets to do all the stuff. It's all topsy turvy. I, I believe Ice T was a pimp, was he not? I believe he's a pimp, and I believe a cop killer. And Dr. Dre, I mean, he put a woman's head through the wall. We got to name some whites here who are not canceled. Sure, Being sure. Weird, but, but Al Franken is a uh, public enemy number uno. Yeah, I mean, uh, Dr. Dre smashed a woman's head through a wall. Is that I mean, right? That feels like it's a little bit like, hey, upsetting. Oh, D Barnes, I believe it was. I'm not sure about the Barnes. I think it was Barnes and Noble. D Barnes and Bailey, Barnum and Bailey. That's I'll a good circus. There's still the circus, right? They're cooking. Is that a monopoly? Because there's, oh, there's Big Top Circus. And then there's Black Circus. Black Circus. There's a black one. Then there's Circus Circus, whatever the hell right. that is. That's different. That's where they stand on their head and flip around, I think, isn't now it? That, you're either going to Harlem Globe or Cirque du Soleil. Oh, Cirque du Soleil. Yes. Circus Circus is the clown casino, which yes. is a weird... I think we talked about this before on the podcast. There's a drop. What kind of... What kind of theme casino would you do? I think I made it restaurant Ooh. or bar. Oh, that's too too on the nose. Restaurant or bar? No, no. In there. I'm saying what we talked about before was <laughs> what kind of restaurant or bar, what theme would you do? Oh. But I don't know if we did casino, because you go to the casino, casino there's, there's the Egypt casino, there's the clown casino. I mean, Chef recommends. So yeah. Just slammed the door. Yeah, we're in trouble. It feels like you're at home with your parents and we're being too loud, you know, and you just hear your dad slam a door. You're like, we're out. Oh, it's so bad. We're going to bed. The men with ties uh, walking around here. <laughs> ties, jobs, and offices. Ties. Um, School ties. But yeah, so what would your casino theme? Let's think about this. I think we might have had this exact conversation. I don't think we did with a casino. No, this is fresh. Because circus is weird. They're like, we're, we're doing the circus casino. Ba, yeah. ba, ba, da, ba, da, black jack. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> sure, what sure. The, the bearded lady, the elephants. There's a couple elephants walking around in that place. But yeah, <laughs> this, I know what you mean. Yeah, I have that at my family parties. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get it out. Uh, that was terrible. Hold on. I think I might be able to do one. You go, you go. Wait, you got one lined up. I had the, the dry lip. <laughs> that was pretty good. Better. Picked it up at the end. What about this? Wait, no, that's Wait a, a that minute. was a little Miss Piggy. Nice, sound like Miss Piggy, yeah. Mm, Yoda. <laughs> I think it was the same uh, actor. Frank Oz. Thank you. Ronald Reagan, the Wizard actor. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Uh, hit me with an elephant. <laughs> Whoa, that, that was, was great. That, that was, was great. Good. I think I got a hidden talent. I think you got something. <laughs> You got you know those little spin things where you pull the string and it went the duck goes. Oh, yeah. You got to do one of those like your own version. Yeah. Nah, that's nothing. Mm. But by the way, last night I, I mean I don't want to mention his name because I've already mentioned it two times. It seems like I have a crush on him. But yeah. I was hanging out with a young comic. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> Really you love this laugh. kid. He really made me laugh. His, his name, he goes by the name Andrew Chavon. Have you met him? Have you seen this I don't kid? believe I've met him. I'm aware of him. I've, I, I know his whole biopic from you. <laughs> but, uh, well, he's a cute kid. He's got real marionette face. and He's got like deep high voice where he's like, oh. Oh, that's fun. One of those silly voices. Sure. But there was a comic on stage. It was a bar show. And the sound was loud. You know when the mic is fucked up and it's like a You know those bar shows? Yes. The sound shit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Done many of them. And it was too loud. And uh, the guy was killing, but it was just loud. And we were like, why is it so loud? And he goes, this is like death metal. <laughs> death metal. That's to find fun. a comedian death metal is really funny. It really made me laugh. This kid, he's got something. Uh, apparently. He's tall. He's got the chubby cheeks. He's a, you know, he's a silly guy. And he, and he makes money on Instagram, which I didn't even know you could do. Yeah. So I uh, did I tell you about my TikTok fiasco? You told me you restarted a TikTok. Oh, okay. Well, it, it's cooking. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling. I got a three million the other day. It, it's like a casino. It's like a slot machine. I don't know what made this one click, but I got the three lemons. I, I, I got to get a lemon because um, I, I got nothing. But I, I'm showing this kid. Show me. He's got 1,100 followers, hmm. and he's making 500 bucks a month. And then I go. He goes. Let's see your TikTok. And I go. I haven't opened the thing since Christmas. Sure. Of you know, oh eight. And he lifts it. I got twelve hundred followers on TikTok. Oh wow! It's that's what he said. He's like, you suck. It was really hurtful. Mine sucked too. I was right there with you, and I just 
Got rid of that puppy. You want to use my guy? You got a guy? I got a guy. And he's like, you can make money on this now. And I said, make the money and you keep it if you just keep doing the talk. So it's it's incentivizing. Right. Well, you got to split it. You can't just give them all the money. Well, I figure it's peanuts. No, 500 a month from Siobhan. Ah. This kid's a loser. He's got nothing going on in all his right. life. I'll do two, 250 Yeah, give him 10% at most. I mean, manager, agent. What, what are we talking about nah, here? You got a point. You got a point. But that's yeah. how little I want to do it. I'm like, take it all. Just don't even tell me about it. I hate it. Yeah, but I mean, that could be thousands of dollars that you've ah, given to this guy. You got guy. a point. You got a point. All right. I take it all back. We'll go We'll go 30 70 but uh, the Chavone fella, he's one of these guys that uh, we went to the movies a couple times. Jesus, you guys are uh, <laughs> butt buddies over here. Well, he's a neighbor and he, he's, oh, okay. he's, he's, he's a, a neighbor. sweet kid. But uh, we got these family hangs. You got to come to Astoria. It's like uh, a family. family. Yeah, it's beautiful. You got potluck cooking. I got Ron on upstairs. He's clomping around. I mean, the noise from this guy. I what is that? These people that walk like that. I know. What has he got? Heels on? It's like he's playing hopscotch in clogs. Yeah, you want to go up there and just let me just watch you and see where the noises come from. Because some of them you're like, I can't even decipher what that could be. Yeah, well, I think he's a, he's a, he's got a bad walk. I mean, the other day he walked in and Sarah's like, "Hurt your leg?" And he's like, "What?" <laughs> he does have a waddle. She's like, "You get hit by a car? Like what happened?" And he's like, "What do you mean?" Uh, and then I got both of them like whispering to me, like, "Why is, why is your wife so mean?" And then she's like, "What's wrong with his legs?" So uh, I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, yeah, but he's clomping around. But then I got I got Steve and and Caitlin up there, and then Senya, the other roommate, who's Quite lovely, I might send say. Send you. Yeah, step to the next. What? Yep. Man, I'll send you a message. Real beauty, beautiful woman. Comedian? She, no, oh, she's like the landlord's better. daughter, which is what? a great name for a film. Yes, the landlord's daughter. This sounds like a like a hot to trot, like a horse whisperer type. Could be a porn, but so she messaged and goes, hey, we should all get together. I don't even know you guys. We should all get together. So I'm like, let's have a big party. We got a big unit over there, and it's kind of like having roommates, but you got private rooms. Right. Now, I, do, you, do you pick a, a common air, or do you, you, you mix it up? Well, everyone comes to my house so far, but uh, it's a big, spacious place. Plus, Ronan's a bachelor, so it's just shit. Yeah, There's like muddy yeah. panties everywhere. Sure. And- <laughs> muddy panties is a great rock band. <laughs> Good blues singer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> muddy panties. <laughs> They're opening for... Uh, Leonard Skinner. I'll accept it. All right. um, I don't know any blues singers. Well, Leonard Skinner ain't the blues. They're a little. They're a little muddy though. They're, muddy waters. Yeah. They're uh, like that southern rock. Never got into Skinner. No, that smell. Oh, I Come like on. Skinner. I think they're good. Oh, the smell. What are you singing about a smell? Sweet Home Alabama. The lyrics are clever. They they fuck with people. Well, Sweet Home Alabama is nice. I like Sweet Home Alabama. You gotta love Sweet Home Alabama. You gotta love Alabama. My donuts, goddamn. You know that thing? No. At the end, when the song's outroing, there's a line. He goes, "My donuts, goddamn it." Someone takes his donuts. Is that right? Can we pull that up, Shelby? I don't know if you can pull that out. It's oh, difficult. That's terrific. Who you, steals a donut? You can Google Le- Sweet Home Alabama, my donuts. Jeez. We don't, no one knows the actual what he says, but it sounds like, my donuts. God damn. Well, I watched it. <laughs> pull it up. I watched a documentary on them. Fun guys living out in Florida, live out in a shack. They would just practice for 12 hours a day, do drugs. They were a bunch of hippie dippies. Everybody thinks of these hicks. They're from Florida. And they're they're nice gentlemen, and uh, they died in a plane crash. So they're not from Alabama. No, that's what everyone thinks. No kidding, Ronnie, Ron Van Zant. I think that was the, the that was the a guy. guy he was like there. a bar brawler, fun dude, and uh, yeah, they uh, they interview them. This one guy who survived or something. He could, he tells you about the whole crash. It's fascinating. Yeah, that's fun. Good fun. I love a plane crash. Yeah, a lot of good plane crashes. Nine Eleven, Buddy Holly. Pentagon. That wasn't so much a crash, was it? That was more of a, uh, I well, guess, a crash. It did have to crash at some point. I guess so. No Jews in the tower. Is that true? That's what people say. I don't know. It feels like there must have been a couple. Yeah. It's a business, Manhattan. I know two people whose dad died in 9-11. How crazy is that? No kidding. Pete? Yeah, that's one. And then this lady I know. No kidding. Dad died in the old 9-1-1. Plus, ran as easy. He was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Woo. A lot of connections. He'll never live that one down. He's a hell of a guy, by the Great way. Great guy. I'm going skiing with him in March. Yeah, people are like, this piece of trash, son of a bitch. I, I see him. I'm like, hey, Steve, all right. Sweet dude. And I get it. You know, like yeah, people go, why would he do it? I'm like, hey, 
guys at the moment. If anyone's going to get it, it's you, baby. You got that right. <laughs> I mean, you got him like 5,000 to 1, if you I ask know, me. I know, exactly. Mean, I was in the Holocaust, the <laughs> slave trade. I was everywhere. I don't know what's what. You might not even be from Louisiana. <laughs> Somebody from Florida, like Leonard Skinner. Neil Stasi had a great uh, roast joke years ago. He goes, uh, Mark Norman's here. Or is he? <laughs> it's just such a simple joke. Ah, oh, that's great. Uh, eight people got it, but I was howling. Oh, uh, that's really funny. Oh, Jesse Pop had a great joke. He goes, uh, you know, we all like to drink, and I, I let these guys, Sean Patton, Neil Stasny, Mark Norman, I let them all sleep in my place. They all wet the bed. I mean, you guys are from New Orleans. What's in the water there besides your houses? <laughs> oh, that's great. Come on. I, I made it a little too long, but roasts, you get it. Roasts are fun. By the way, Sean Patton, uh, our friend, our, our lover, Yes. He's posting some old throwbacks. He got like 40% more attractive. Have you noticed that? He looks great. Yeah, he cleaned up. I think we all did. You used to be hideous. I was a ghoul. <laughs> Shelby's still weird. But we, we all had a bad go. We were, we were wet behind the ears. We were whippersnappers. Well, one of the things that's so brutal about life for these women, they're, 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 their pussies bleed, they yeah. got swollen tits, they're yeah. mean, but they got... <laughs> Men just get more attractive. Every guy is more attractive. We lucked out. It's wild. And then they hit 24 and they just turn to mushy the shit. Worthless dates. It's over. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're disgusting and, and useless. But uh, it's tough for the ladies. That's why they got to invent a pantyhose or something. You got to get something cooking in your old age. Yeah, men, they get all grizzled up. And like, I mean, like Paul Newman. Get more attra- George Clooney in the 80s. I, he looks worse than me. Yeah, now he's a hunk. Yeah, he's really something. That he can't act worth shit, but he's really something else. Oh, he stinks. <laughs> stinks. Interesting. Well, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a shame. And they get hornier at, with age, the ladies. Yeah, they and uglier they, and hornier. We get less. Yeah, they basically turn into men. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, we got something there. They, they're they horny, ugly, and gross, and they're like, oh, welcome to my world. Yeah, that's pretty good. But meanwhile, we're getting more attractive. Yeah. Now, we could fuck anybody. Isn't that something? Well, it, I, I've talked about this before, off stage, maybe on uh, on mic, whatever we are. What is this chair? Huh? <laughs> We're on mic. <laughs> what do you mean chair? We're on. I say on stage for uh, on stage. What's the podcast on? On Donner on Blitzen. <laughs> <laughs> Onset Alzheimer's. I don't know. It's uh. We're on. On it, uh, we're we're on. We're, Mike. On, we're still on Mike. We're on Mike. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I gotta tell you, I think this might be my favorite episode all the time. We're on Pod. Um, on Potter. That's a on reindeer. Par. On Par. Jack Par. By the way, we're gonna have to talk about Luke List. Maybe we'll tease oh, it. Oh, double L hockey sticks. By the way, most. I uh, just hold that thought of what I was gonna talk about. What was on, I gonna talk about? On Mike. On Par. Now, before that, on Edge. It was about women. Oh, I think on star. I think I talked about this on the show. Mm. I think I could fuck more now because I'm not desperate to fuck. Of course, of course. It's it's uh, it's in the statistics. When you're 22, you're like, please, come yes, on, they fuck can, me. It's coming and out of your eyeballs. It's unappealing. Yeah, yeah. You, you, we were all unappealing. But now, if a woman's like, I'm not gonna fuck you, you're like, ah, that's fine. Yeah, I'll see you later. And then they're like, all right, let's do it. You yeah, talk me into oh, it. All right. But that wedding ring, I mean, it's a, it's a cliche for a reason there, Fatty. They, they go, hey, this guy, is, somebody's willing to fuck him. He's willing to settle down. I can't have him. I'm in. Right. Now, will you wear a wedding ring, you think? It doesn't feel like you. I don't like jewelry, and Me I don't uh, like a ring, for sure. You, you get the handshake. It hurts. It's brutal. It's weird. I mean, I hated it, too. I told you my, my wife happened to be sitting next to me when I was engaged, and I was texting with a friend and I, I I tried on the wedding ring because you got to buy it beforehand so sure. a little kid can shove it in your ass on your wedding day. Mm-hmm. And uh, although we didn't have a little kid, really, we had Vitor. Oh, okay, that counts. <laughs> well, so I put it on and I sent a text. And you know, she doesn't like read my text, but she was just sitting over there and I just saw. I was like, I fucking hate it. This is awful. I feel like a woman. And she's like, ah! uh, <laughs> and I was like, I'll wear the ring. I'm only kidding. And so I was trying to look cool for him. Right. No, I'm with you. I don't want to wear it. I got a Nuva ring and uh, a nipple ring. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I'll do it. But I like the, the simple band. I go simple band necessities. Yes. Uh, but I'm a simple uh, kind of oh, band. Please, I'm eating over here. Oh, yeah, is, that, is that Leonard? Right. That's Skinner, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, something. It's quite simple. 
Hey, folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. The moment we've been waiting for since September is finally here. In honor of the big game, DraftKings Sportsbook, an, an official sports betting partner of the Super Bowl 56, is giving new customers 56 to 1 odds on either team. Are you kidding me? Woo-wee! I'm signing up for this. Holy hell. Another wrong with that. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's unbelievable. New customers can get a free shot at a $1 million top prize with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use promo code TUESDAYS and get 56 to 1 odds on either team. Bet just $5 and get 200 80 in free bets if your team wins. It's insane. Mm. That's promo code Tuesdays at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 56. 21 plus minimum age and location requirements vary by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for full list of requirements and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Void where prohibited. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call or text the TN Red Line. Tennessee Red Line. 1-800-889-9789. In Connecticut, call 888-789-777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In New York City, you can call 877-8-HOPE-NEW-YORK. H-O-P-E-N-Y. Wow. Do the whole thing. There you go. Hey, Tuesdays with Stories brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy, folks. Just like going to the gym or the dentist, we should be caring for our mental health as much as our physical health. Going to therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means that you know that people have emotions and we all need help controlling them sometimes. Look, we got therapy. We go to the same guy. Very important. You got to flush out the system. You got to take out the garbage sometimes. You got a lot of childhood drama. You're not perfect. Learn that about yourself. Look within. Look inward. Not inward. So get on it, folks. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and you get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. Thank you. Folks, Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Raycon. Even if you have already failed your New Year's resolution, that doesn't mean you can't still shake things up. And no matter how much you shake, Raycon's earbuds will stay right where you put them. These are the earbuds that stay in place. I know I was at the gym the other day doing jumping jacks, and I was so grateful I had Raycon because I'm doing jumping jacks, backflips, all kinds of crazy stuff over there. They stay right in place. And here in New York City, you don't know when you have to run from a, a monster. I mean, it's wild out you there. You got that right. And uh, my friend Jason Kidd, he's got a great story about a guy chasing him, and the only thing he thought was, I'm glad I have Raycon because they're still in my ear. I'm <laughs> not even kidding. Go. That really happened. They don't fall out. Raycon wireless earbuds are the best way to bring audio with you because no matter how much you shake things up, you know they won't fall out of your ears. Their everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. Raycons offers eight hours of playtime and 32-hour battery. Do you know how to do it there, uh, Marcus? You want to tell them how? Yeah, sure. I'm a big fan. As a Tuesday, uh, with Stories Listener, you get 15% off at checkout using code TUESDAYS at uh-oh. That's the wrong one That's right now. That's the wrong one. I got it. I got it. Shit, I had the other one locked and loaded. I'm sorry. I Cut threw that. you off. Right now, Tuesdays with Stories listeners can get 15% hey, off. Hey, I had that right. Their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays to save 15% on Raycon. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Okay, now we're back to the show. Is it hot in here? It's or is my really hot. Day? I'm dying. It's saying, yeah, I came from the steam room. <laughs> Ooh, I, just, I just steamed. Yeah. And now I got layers on. I, I put my thermals uh, in the bag because I was dying. It didn't take. <laughs> I never got that. What does that mean? It didn't take. Like I took a shower. I'm all sweaty. I took a shower. It didn't take. Well, I think he's saying, uh, you know, I tried to do something, but it didn't. it didn't grasp ah it got it got it they okay. say it a couple times in the show I think. yeah they do I, I never caught that it didn't take but i'm not a big shower middle of the day shower guy i gotta mm. knock it out in the morning 
Oh, really? I shower in the middle of the day. To be a shower starts you off. Here we go. Shower. We're, we're clean. We're ready. Let's get out in the world. And if I shower in the middle of the day, I'm all off. I'm like, wait, is this the beginning now? What's going on? Interesting. Uh, yeah, I'll shower sometimes more. But today, I was going to the gym beforehand. Uh, so I just woke up. I came here. I went to the gym, you know, pumped some iron and sure. uh, for about 10 minutes and steam for about 45. And then got dressed and came over here. So I'm not going to shower before I go to the gym. I'll go back. No. Then I'll shower before I leave. All right. I just like eating cereal at night. It's, it's a little off. I love cereal at night. I actually like it too. It's sad when you find out how much sugar and horror shit is in cereal. Don't you just love cereal? Then they tell you, hey, you know, it's full of nitrates and glucose and, and uh, miscarriage and placenta. You're like, come on. Can I enjoy anything? I don't give a fuck. See, but you're doing it now. You're doing I, it to me. I know. I know. I'm, I I'm complaining about it. I don't give a fuck. I, first of all, I'm 39 years old. I'm going to live. I give it till 50. Then you start worrying. Okay. Think okay. about Jay Leno, fast food, all those old people. They ate burgers every day and fries. Scotch. My parents are alive. Whiskey, yeah, yeah, it's cigarettes. Here's something. Uh, you know, I'm a trim guy. I like to stay nimble. It's mm. not even all all that much aesthetic, or what's the word? What's the word? You Vanity? Zoop, supercilious? No, uh, superstition. superficial. Ah, superficial. Superficial. It's not even that as much as, like, I want to just be... Movable, sure. Like even my little car. I bought a little car. I want that thing to be nimble, <laughs> whipping around. So I've noticed I put on a little bit of a little uh, dumper at the bottom there. Yeah, Shelby and I were talking about it before. Uh, we got here. Just a little pouch, mm-hmm. just a little kangaroo down there. Sure. And I go, what is it? And I figured out what it is because I hadn't changed anything in my life. Uh huh. It was like the Seinfeld where I'm, I'm measuring out the cereal. Yeah. You, you're getting old, but. Uh, you I don't need Oreos? <laughs> Al, my rider, I couldn't think of anything, so I was like, yeah, throw in some granola bars. Because how often are we at the, the airport, we're in an Uber, we're in a train, or whatever it is, you go, I just need a little snack. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go to a full restaurant, I just need a snack. So I got these uh, granola bars in my rider, so I just throw them in my suitcase, and then I'm eating 12 granola bars a day because they're just in there. That's what's doing it. Granola bars are bad news. It's a candy bar. It's like I'm talking to a woman. This is embarrassing. Granola. Yeah. Granola's good. No, granola's bad. Oh, get out of here with the granola. I eat a chocolate chip cookie every day. I shove oh, it right in my that's asshole. That's bad, too. I mean, it's good, but it's fun. I'm having a good time. Well, I'm I fit. Love, I love a granola, but I'm saying you eat 12 a day. It's going to add up. But you're talking, them, but this is where you're full of baloney with this super officiated, whatever you say. What was the word? Superficial. Uh, superficial, mm-hmm. because you can be nimble. I eat a cookie every day. I run a mile in seven minutes and 20 seconds. I can whip around out there with a cookie. But you're eating one. Eat 12 cookies and get back to me ah, i can have some cookie but a cookie is crazier than a granola granola's good you know. take a nice hearthy dump i don't know what granola is quite frankly i don't either i think it's a wheat or a grain give it a goog shelby granola is no good granola it's, is uh, that's it's a carbohydrate and it's covered in brown sugar molasses semen all kinds of stuff maybe i don't know about granola i thought granola was healthy but i'm from like no. the 70s yeah that's all I'm like milk is good granola is good a cookie a day keeps your uh, asshole gay gay well uh, <laughs> Bread was good back then. Now bread's the you I'm know all the bread. grand wizard. Love bread. Really, I get, I get a, a bagel every morning, croissant, the whole thing. I mean, I, who doesn't love a good uh, good ri- risen wheat or what is it? Uh, raisin. Yeast. Raisin. High yeast. Yes, the big it, yeast it shall be risen. Yeast but, infection. Yeah, but uh, it's in everything. You try to avoid bread. It's pizza. It's it's cupcake. It's muffin. It's pancake. It's sandwich. It's uh, it's cake. It's everything. I think you just gotta live your life a little bit. You get the exercise in. I mean, I quit the soda. That's the big. Soda soda is horrible. That's horrendous. And soda. But you think you forget that? Like, think about the average asshole. You think about the average age of uh, what do you call it? Consent. Um, death. COVID. Death. Yeah, the ah. death is like seventy eight. Is that right? That's like average. So think about all the people eating fast food every day, drinking soda, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, fucking their dad. Sure. We don't smoke. We don't uh, do drugs, really. Not like heavy drugs. No, Not not Coke and all that shit. Sure. Shelby's tossing you a thing here. Uh, Hit me, Shelby. Did we get the My Donuts thing? Oh, shit. Uh Uh-oh. Seven secretly unhealthy foods. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Number one with a bullet. Energy slash granola bars. So that's where that little uh, Dunkaroos was forming down there. Ah, the granola. Well, I stand corrected. I don't know much about food. Number two, granola. 
Number one's granola, number two's granola? Number one's a energy bar granola bar. Ah. Because that's got, you know, the kind bar. Oh, it's mm. so good for you. It's covered in jizz and, and chocolate and, and uh, you know, horse gum. But enough about my mother. <laughs> smoothies, number three. Get out of here. Oh, this is gonna, they don't specify, though. Is crumbling. I'm drinking a smoothie. Here's what's in my smoothie. Blueberries, uh, banana, ton of spinach, a handful right. of spinach, and almond milk. Uh-huh. Are they going to try to tell me that's unhealthy? Well, you're probably doing it right, but some people get the, the, the ice cream scoop in yes, there, the exactly. sherbet, the anal. This is why all this shit is bullshit. People are like, Chipotle, not healthy. I'm like, I'm eating brown rice, grilled chicken. Vegetables. And, and salsa. Right. And some veggies. What are you talking about? I'm with you on that Chipotle. You can't just have a restaurant be unhealthy. Exactly. People are like, Panera Bread. You know how much is in the Panera Bread? I'm like, I'm eating a salad. I'm eating a salad. What are you talking soup? about? You got a point, a Cheesecake Factory, too. They're like, that is the f- they no. did a special in the Cheesecake Factory. They got options. It's the fattest thing in the thing. It's fatter than your mother's ass. I'm like, what are you talking about? Exactly. I ate a fucking Caesar salad and a six pound bowl of macaroni and cheese. That's healthy. Exactly. It's like saying, if you fuck that gay guy, you will get AIDS. Like, well, maybe one of them, but not him. Exactly. It's exactly like saying that. <laughs> yes, AIDS. All right. Number four, vitamin drinks, sports drinks. That's, well, that idea. That's, that's an old adage. Vitamin old, water. That's, we all knew me. that. Get out of here. Fat free foods. What's that mean? That means uh, like a, here's a fat-free oh, cookie. They that shove thing. peanut butter and not right. pe- uh, sugar in there and butter because it's all it's non-fat, but it's still carby and all this shit. By not the way, want to get Chipotle after? Uh, I don't know if I have time. Oh, you gotta I run. Got therapy, but maybe what? if we have time, what? This one can't be right. What is it? But this is this is to your point. Number five is salads. Well, here it is. These guys get This is get clickbait the, horseshit. Well, We're they, falling for these it. These guys get the, the dried cranberry, the almonds, and the, the feta, and the blue cheese, and the syrupy dressing, and the ranch. I get it. It's, this is clickbait shit. That's such the, the classic. This is what journalism is. Heads up. We got some bad foods. Mm-hmm. Salad. Right. Get out of here. Salad's good. I tossed my father's salad. Salad is good. You got that right. Lettuce, greens. <laughs> My donuts, goddamn. Yeah. All right, where are you at on this uh, Neil Young? Love Neil Young. I don't get it. I don't get any of it. I, I don't either. care. I mean, I, 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 well, we don't want to talk politics. Right. What are we uh, going to do? Oh, I didn't know it was politics. It was just uh, Everything's the, it's politics. radio. It's all politics. Didn't that suck? It does suck. Everything I love sucks. Neil, but, uh, you know, what are you doing? Who cares? All all right. Right. How about this? This is what is so oh, annoying. Man. I look at like Pearl Jam's Instagram. They're like, we're coming to tour. And then there's like several comments. Excuse me, why are you still on Spotify? And you're like, uh, put a gun in your mouth, shoot it, put another one in your asshole, shoot that way so it all yourself. explodes in the middle. You know, they, everyone's going to get off Spotify. By the way, I'm off Spotify because they took me off because they don't want to pay me. They don't want to pay comedians. That should be the story. Not, not, hey, this other guy's doing really well. What about us? Getting zilch, getting screwed by the man. Yeah, that's right, you Swedish cuck. I know you're out there listening. And by the way, can't you listen to Joe Rogan and go, this guest is an idiot? Well, that's, that's what I do. That's what I don't I get. don't listen to it at all. Well, but you listen and you go, this guy is stupid. Well, the problem is he's bigger than the news, which maybe somebody should step back and go, why is he bigger than the news? Why is this uh, bald pothead who's who likes fist fighting bigger <laughs> than the news? And look, I like I like Joe. But uh, I'm criticizing the guest, not Joe. Love yeah, Joe. something's got a something's amiss, and uh, it's weird that no one's factoring that in. And it, and it's weird to see news anchors in suits be like, "Ah, we got to take this guy down." Then they throw out racist, and you're like, "Well, now the whole thing's moot." Now it's all and off kilter. Incredible. And then you got Joe being like, "I'll try to do better," and you're like, "Ah, well, he's 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 gonna keep it real, I think." We'll but see. but that post he did was. Pretty pretty solid. Pretty good. I think he nailed it. He came off as the good guy, and he's like, "I like Neil. I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm gay. Love Neil, but well, you know, whatever. To each his own. You know, Neil, to get on anal. Spotify. Rogan, stay on Spotify. What do I care? Neil kicks ass. I love Joe. He's been very nice to me. And now the uh, CNN CEO has been uh, plowing some some colleagues. <laughs> he I resigned. Didn't hear about that? Oh no, kidding. Yeah, well, it's not in the news. He resigned for fucking. Fucking a lady, a younger lady in the office. Ah, that's that's a no no too, Daffy. Yeah, to uh, to uh, each his anal, and uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. All right. Well, I don't know much about the issues. It's all pipes. All pipes. Whoopi Goldberg hates the Jews. We'll move on. Um, 
What were we going to talk about? Something. Oh, yeah. Something oh, Luke List. I got to talk about the Luke List. Yes. So I, tell me, what is he, a golfer? I came on here. I said, I got to change my name to Luke. Luke List is a golfer, which, you know, he's uh, he's on the tour. Never won anything. Uh, he better not be on Spotify. He's just out there golfing away, being Luke List. And I've seen a couple people have been like, hey, you know Luke List? And I go, oh, that's great. That boy, Luke Key. And uh, we talked about, hey, I should change my name to Luke. I'll be Luke List. How fun is that? Cool sure. hand, Luke List. Four days later, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the tournament ended on Saturday. Four days later, the guy wins his first ever tournament. Look at that. We're in the zeitgeist, but we're, we're synced up period-wise. It's wild, and it's, by the way, this is sad, it's the most response I've ever gotten for anything ever in my <laughs> Come life. On. I got emails, Instagram, a guy, fucking Louis Anderson, showed up at my house with balloons. What? He's dead. Yeah, he came back, Ferris wow. Bueller. And it was just insane. How many messages I got all day, and I, f- starting Friday, they're like, he's in third, he's looking for, he's in striking distance all day. They're like, there's three holes left, four holes left. I didn't see the tournament. I was out. I had a family hang that day. Everyone come over. You got to come over. I'd like to come by. Maybe I'll get the Beamer out and hightail it up to Queens. I'd love that. We'll go for a ride, and then we'll meet up with the others. You got to yeah. beat Siobhan. I know. Apparently, this kid's, <laughs> uh, I'm jealous of him. He's taking my spot. 500 a month. Instagram reels, uh, reels, but uh, he can't whisper. You ever meet these people that can't I whisper? I hate a non-whisperer. It's bananas. First what of is all, that? he's always late. I invite him to the movies. He's a silly goose. So I say, hey, I'm going to the movies alone. I'm a sad person. Sure. So he comes. He's like 30 minutes late, this guy. 30 minutes? That's unexcusable. I mean, Unacceptable. I, mean, yeah, I don't I know thought about you like this guy. I, I don't know I about 30. It might have been 10. Well, you know me with the late. I mean, I'm, uh, uh, I'm- You got 30 minutes early. I'm doing circles around the place. I sure. Got, I got mud on my pants. Uh, that's a problem. How do you these, put the shoe up there? Is that what did it? Look at these shoes. Yeah, the shoe. These shoes have seen better gaze. I mean, they're uh, they're red. They're they're ugly. Can we get a can we get a close up of that shoe? I mean, look at this. What'd you do? Walk uh, in the snow? I got the boots out there, Johnson. Well, here's the thing. I've been wearing boots. Boots on the ground. I've been, I've been wearing boots, but I was going to the gym. You can't show up at the gym with a boot. No, they'll give you the boot. <laughs> they hate a boot. <laughs> You ever see Wag the Dog? I like it. That's a hell of a picture. Good but pick, and they got it nailed it before uh, uh, before it was a thing. I know, one of those things. Ahead but of its time. Dennis Leary has one of the funniest lines. I remember being a kid and rolling my dad and I. It's one of our bonding moments. You don't hear floor. that sentence anymore. Which one? Dennis Leary had one of the funniest lines. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very 90s sentence. Well, you might have got it from someone else, but... Good point, Louis C.K. Uh, and Wag the Dog, he goes... there they Because they create a fake war with... Um, who's Belushi? Where's he from? Uh, Bo- uh, Albania. Albania, yes. Cre- uh, create a fake war from Alba- with Albania. And, uh, you know, Dennis Leary works in Hollywood, and he's supposed to be creating whatever. Uh-huh. And he's got, like, a pa- pad and paper, and he's like, I- Albania's hard. Nothing rhymes with Albania. I, don't- I got nothing. What if we did Italy instead? Like, we could do, like, we could do the boot, give them the boot. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's the whole half cock. Thank you. That's the whole joke, but it made me laugh so hard. The boot, give the boot. The, boot. Yeah, the, guy, that, the thing about, um, you know, your writing yes. is so funny to me. You're I know. Trying to, like, work, workshop. Because we do that. You go, Whoopi Goldberg, Whoopsie Goldberg, uh, Soldberg, Holdberg. And I'm sitting there like, uh, and then you tweet it, and everybody hates it. But it's the, if you could see the process of how silly it is, just rhyming things. All right, Goldberg, Moldberg, Holdberg, you know, it's Iceberg Lettuce, Goldberg, uh, Titanic. It's a, it's a a horrifically embarrassing process. Well, that's the show. I mean, that's yeah. our whole show. Well, you're they're seeing it in real time, but if you saw me at a coffee shop going, Oh, that's bad. Well, I just did one Rogan, Neil Young, Feel Young. I just did one. You ever, you ever, <laughs> you ever write? That's how I write. Shelby cracked on that one. Yeah, we got him. We need a cat, a, a stuffed cat, and a Shelby bust. Those yes. are the two things we need in here. Both pussies. Does anyone make busts? Call in if you make a bust. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a cop called in, but uh, there's got to be a bus guy out there or gal. Um, Gals have nice bus with that girl from the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was I going to say? It was so good. Luke List, The Bus, no. Dennis Leary, Wag the Dennis Dog. Dennis Leary. Uh, oh, did you ever write one? I spent oh, a day writing. writing. You're like four hours of writing. Yes. I come up with one tag. Yes. And it eats shit. Story of my queef. I did two days in a row. I'm talking zilch. Oh, nada, yeah. Nada. Not a tee on a hot crowd. Yeah. And the whole joke, I got a joke about my buddy touching a painting. It does very well. I don't want to give it away because I got a new special. I only got 12 minutes, so I can't give this away. But don't give it away. I had a line about how it leaves oils. And I was like, an oil stays on a painting permanently. And I'm like, that makes me want to touch a painting more. Ah. And then the line was, see the smudge where the eyebrows are supposed to be? 
That was me. <laughs> Nothing. Really? Oh, zero. Oh, and I'm gold. embarrassed by it. Is my I, camera not working? Give it four tries, they say. I'm two for like zero. Not a not a chuckle. Oh, two for is no good. Zero to two. But I do that same thing. I'm in my apartment. I'm talking to a wooden spoon. I'm in my underwear. I got half a boner. I am killing in my apartment. The teddy bears are laughing. My figurines are howling. And I bring that shit on stage. And woo, I'm like, they're going to write an article about this. This bit's going to change society. Zilch. I still have that bit. I, I remember from like 2003 how I got braces for Christmas. Mm. You know the bit. I used to do it. I tried it. I've talked about it. My, my braces were a Christmas gift for my birthday. Oh, yeah. I got a tetanus shot. <laughs> and I was like, this is <laughs> the funniest great. joke anyone's That's ever written big. ever. I still lingers. I mean, it ain't just cheese every night just a <laughs> big bag of cheese bitch i'm with you man hey we, we all have our white whales i got that bit about it we went to the, the strip club there's no no women in there it's a gay bar that's it's a huge. bunch of horny dudes listening to motley crew drinking bud light with, with the heart on that you got to do that again i've tried it up down left right six ways to sunday it is death up there Maybe what it is is people don't understand that there's a time when there's no strippers. Ah, that's a part of it. You gotta really sell that. Yeah. You gotta sell it. You gotta go, I went to a strip club. There was It was during the day, so there was no dancers. Right. No dancers. Right. Because otherwise, they're like, why would there be no dancers? That that does come up. I can see them kind of like, wait, what? Yeah. So maybe you got something there. What about the toothpaste? You do the toothpaste yet? <sighs> the cavity. Working on it. <laughs> It's killing in my apartment. Uh, it can't be. You need that turn because you know when you're 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 killing in your apartment, you're writing great stuff, or you think you are, and then you go up and you you're doing well with your old stuff. And you go, all right, here we go. I'm gonna throw that new one in. Here it comes, and the first line gets zero, and you just immediately go. Of course. I got nothing. I'm freaking out. And then you kind of start stammering, and then you, you dry mouth, and then you can't get the second part out, and then you have no confidence in it, so they hate you. Yep. Careful. Oh. You're showing off the pouch. We got a pouch. Granola. Um. Energy bar. Hey, hey, Tuesdays with Stories is excited for the new sponsor, Endeavor Athletic. The last thing you want to worry about at the gym is how your clothes are riding up in a certain space. Don't let ill-fitting athletic gear get in the way of being the best you can be on the field, in the gym, or wherever you exercise. That's why Endeavor's small batch craft athletic apparel is made to move with you. These guys sent me some stuff. It fits like a glove. It feels good. I got a sweater for the lady. She wears it every time she goes boxing now. It's just comfortable, it's agile, it moves with you, it's good stuff. Hell, you can wear this stuff around, too. You don't have to just wear it to the gym. It looks that good, and it feels good. The crew neck sweatshirt they sent us is made of NASA space-certified technology worn by the Trezar crew. That's pretty cool. The print on the inside is made of the same material that is on the outside of spaceships designed to reflect heat from the craft as it flies through the atmosphere. So by putting the print on the inside, it reflects heat back to your body to keep you warm. Hey, great for these New York winners. Great for running, cycling, yoga, lifting, and everything else that makes you sweat. With years of research and performance testing behind each design, every garment Endeavor makes is guaranteed to exceed all performance expectations. And as a Tuesday with Stories listener, you can save 15% off at checkout using code TUESDAYS at EndeavorAthletic.com. That's E-N-D-E-A-V-O-R Athletic.com. Promo code TUESDAYS for 15% off at checkout. Endeavor. You don't give up when the reps get hard and your performance gear shouldn't either. Thank you. That sounded nice. I like that stuff. Tuesdays of Stories also brought to you by ExpressVPN. Have you ever watched a movie on Netflix and then wanted to see the rest of that director's work? Well, if you're in the U.S. and in Spielberg mood, you can watch Minority Report, but if you want to see Jaws and Jurassic Park, you would need to hop on a plane to Argentina. Watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN is like paying for a gym membership and only being able to use the treadmill. You got that right. P.U. ExpressVPN lets you change your online location so you can control where you want Netflix to think you're located. Uh -huh. That sounds fun. With almost 100 different server locations, you can gain access to thousands of new shows and movies. This is killer. 
Hell yeah. I use ExpressVPN to make Netflix think I was in Canada so I could watch Pulp Fiction, then switch to my country to Italy and watch Jackie Brown. Hey, nice. That's fun. I own both those movies. All I had to do was open the app, select a location, tap one button to connect, and refresh the page. It's the fastest VPN I've used and works on phones, laptops, smart TVs. Basically, if you can stream from it, if you can stream from it, ExpressVPN works on it. So be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Don't forget to use our link, expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays, to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Hell yeah. Holy shit, for the love of p- farts, let's get back to the show. Please, God. Just want to give a shout out to the folks at home. We got a hell of a merch store cooking. We all miss Greg. He's fat. He's a cat, but we can't bring him here. We got Greg shirts out there. They're selling like hot gays. You got to get on. Two. We got two of them. Holy two shirts. hell. Tell them how to get the, the merch there. Where do they go? Two separate shirts. Tuesdays with stories dot big cartel dot com. There you go. That's Tuesdays with stories dot big cartel dot com. Calm. We got a ton of shirts, great designs, killer. We have those phone things. Mugs. You put your phone, whatever this case, the face, the case. The, the case. We got mugs, shot glasses, Hats, maybe. We stickers. should work on shot glasses. Hats, yeah. Stickers, pants, socks, jock straps, sports bras, muddy panties. Yeah. You face name paint, it. Uh, Black wigs, face. Everything <laughs> you've ever wanted. Tuesdays with stories. Dot bigcartel.com. You got to show up with the shirt on when we see you. Please, they're lunch. Get on it. Tell a friend. George is saying cut it. So Siobhan. Ah, <laughs> who is this kid? Bring him in. I'm going to rough him up. He's a cute kid. So he comes to the movie theater. He's like 20 minutes late. And you know me. I'm very uh, particular. I don't want anyone to hate me. I want to be a good citizen. Yes. And so there's a bunch. It's an afternoon movie. It's like a psychological thriller starring women. So it's like it's me mm. and a bunch of old ladies. I'm already out. And I th- he's just going because he's like, what? Joe List invited me somewhere. You know, <laughs> we're big deals, you know. Apparently, yeah. So uh, he, Luke List. he shows up. He's like 25 minutes late. And he's like, comes in. He's like, you want some popcorn? He's like, what are these guys? He can't. He's physically incapable of whispering. I hate those people. And all those people are at my show. Every time they're like, I'll get the Mai Tai. I'm like, <laughs> just tell the waiters an inch away from you. Why do I hear you? I'm, I'm on the other side of the room on stage. But you could whisper, right? I, mean, I, would whisper, I love a whisper. Like this. Hey, have you seen that thing? I got that thing. great movie. Yeah. It's popcorn. That's how you whisper. I yes. love some popcorn. 12 Years a Slave. Yeah. We, we got to get out of here. Oh, yeah. It's a funny film. Ah, yeah. That's you whisper. He does the thing where there's still a bass in his voice. Oh, uh, who, 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 who. And I'm going with this old lady. I want to be a good boy. Yes. I want them to rub my head after and give me five bucks exactly. for being so quiet. And then, then you go, you want to go, shut the fuck up. But then you seem like an asshole. They go, geez, you shushing me? You're like, well, you can't whisper. Bad whisper. And then uh, we went to the movies another time. Jeez, we got a double date with and this he, kook? Well, this is, a, this is a few days later. Wow, and, uh, a lot of movies. Went to see Network at the... I asked you, but you were going somewhere. You went to the... You were meeting up with Salacuse. Yeah, I'm listening. So we went and saw Network, one of the great movies of all time, on film, which sounds romantic, doesn't uh, it? It really does. They're like 16 millimeter film, but then you see it and you're like, it's shit. What do you mean? Because it's popping and buzzing. Uh, there's lines across. It's literally film from it's, 1976. It's like listening to a record. You go, hey, this will be cute and old timey. Then you're like, <laughs> you know, and you can't get a, a Garfunkel going. It sounded like uh, Donald Duck. <laughs> Uh, but we went there, and and you know Louis, he's a big movie queef, so he's there. Yep. And so you know Louis does, he just shows up right at movie time, doesn't get anything, so he's like, "Give me your popcorn, give me some M and M's." He's one of those guys, uh, the mooch. So I know Siobhan is late, so I text him, "Hey, show up with popcorn and Reese's Pieces, or you're out of the business." <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he was late. And he shows up. He's sitting behind us because we had a few of us. My friend Bill Sheff was there, and Sarah. So he shows up. He's sitting behind us. And uh, I get the popcorn. I go, there you go, Louie. Yeah, stuff that in your mouth. And so I'm sitting there going, hey, this is fun. This is fun. I got Sarah, Big Lou, and uh, Chef is over there. And I look. I go, hey, Chef, like this. And he's on, got his phone. He's like, whoa. He's looking. Uh, he's texting. This uh, this guy, everything you tell me is horrible. He's late. And te- well, he's very funny. He makes 500 a month on Instagram. All right. That's pretty good. Um, well, the movie is tough, though, because it's a weird hang. Because you're like, hey, we should go do this together. But you can't talk. 
Yeah. So it's tough. maybe after you get a milkshake and you blow each other, but at the time you're like, I want to talk to this 500 bucks a month guy. Well, that's why it's important to be early for a movie because you stand in the circle and you chat. You chat in the circle. And you sit, you come back, you have a post circle. Circle jerk. Pre circle, post circle. <laughs> yes, I love that. So did you hang out after or did you have to run? We did a little circle, but then we had to go back. And uh, so that was that. We did a quick circle. That was funny. That was great. That line's awesome. And then, uh, you know, he went and I don't know what he does with his life. Puts well, his- Oh, sorry. When I first met the lady, I was like trying to think of fun, cool things to do, and I said, "Hey, the uh, what's that movie called? It's a Wonderful Life. Ah, Playing at the IFC. It's yes. Christmas time. It's snowing. We're 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 not Jewish. So I said, let's pop an edible. I'm trying to be fun, new guy. Uh-huh. Let's pop an edible. Go watch It's a Wonderful Life. So she goes, great. She's down for anything. She likes drugs and uh, Jimmy Stewart suicide. Yeah. So. We uh, we popped the edible. We're like, whoa! We're that couple at the counter, like, oh, I'll have a milk done. <laughs> and like the the guy with the zits is like, all right, you fucking kook, get out of here. We go in there. We're giggling. You know that opening where the the stars are talking. It's the worst science or uh, special effects of all time. Yeah. And there's a guy in there, three rows ahead of us, and it's just us and him. And he, mm. of course, he sits three rows ahead. Might have been me. Might have been you. But he's weeping, uh, weeping, weep. and we're in the back, high out of our minds, going, oh, look at this guy, he's a fucking homo, ah. you know, we're all high, <laughs> and this guy is, I think he watched it with his dad, his dad died in front of him, or he diddled him, or something, but this guy had some deep connection with this flick. Sure, me too. So, eventually, it was like George, he turns around and goes, what the fuck's your problem? Oh. You guys come in here, you don't shut the fuck up, and we're both high, like... <laughs> <laughs> and then he just yelled at us, turned around, sat back down, and kept crying. Oh, and I was like, let's get the fuck out of here. And we got out of there, and it was like oh. the most tense, awkward moment of my life, being that high, being the only people getting yelled at by a stranger. Woo! That was a doozy. I was uh, I saw um, Rushmore in the theater. That was like when you're in high school, you see every movie. That was huge. That was fun. And Rushmore, you know, one of my favorites, both of these movies. Maybe his best. Oh, absolutely. No question about it. Anderson. Um, uh, so we're there, and it's me, my friend Mike Robinson, and Derek, and the whole gang. And for whatever reason, I was it was packed because back then a movie came out, everybody went. Everybody went. And he was a hot director, and you had Bill Murray in there, you had Schwartzman. That was a hot movie. Murray. Well, the trailer was hot because it had the "Oh, are they?" Oh, that are was in they? the trailer, so everybody was like, "Here it comes." This yeah, is the yes. See, that Luke, scene was big. Luke Wilson. And uh, so I, we were sitting with kind of like we had our you know feet up, legs spread like this, not up, but you know your your knees. And there was a mother and her son. What are we in, Whitman? This is in, uh, yeah, probably Bridgewater, Mass, mm. or Randolph. Ooh, big Randolph. Rand. Big, that was like the first stadium-style cinema. It was so exciting. Randolph. It was very, very big. But we were sitting there, and for whatever reason, we were just farty. We had a lot of farts. I don't know what we had there. It happens. And so we couldn't stop farting. It became very funny. And uh, <laughs> I felt bad, though, because you're... you're assholes here and the lady and her son's head are here you're projecting and you know it's bad i feel bad i was 15 don't call in but you can't stop and then you're trying to force fire and it's and then you're trying to hit him on the head <laughs> i know and they were getting mad well, and rightfully so you can't blame them so they kept doing this thing and we just kept squeezing out more and more oh. and pushing his stomach and finally she stood up and goes you guys need to get your ass checked out Ooh. and we just howled laughing because she pluralized us yeah. but singleized the asshole as though we share an asshole ah. she was like you guys need to get your ass checked out right. and we caught that and we went ass we have two ass oh, ah, we were dying it was like deaf great. comedy jam in there and they ended up leaving they probably told the ah, manager well you shit wo- air all over them it was bad I don't, I'm not proud of it well, but you were a young buck I was young and full of cum or whatever <laughs> I mean I was Max Fisher you know I was, uh, right. I was writing screenplays and farting yeah you were a degenerate and uh, you were vandalized her hair with your gas. It was bad. I, I, I feel bad. Like if I was at the movies now and somebody kept farting behind me, I'd probably, probably lose date them. But yeah, I'd probably be upset. But. Well, were you a little tuned up? No, this is before I even drank. Wow. I think it was just I was just a kook. Well, you were a young boy. Boys will be gay. Boys to men. Do you ever like them? I bought their album. Dum, 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 da, da, they had a couple. Hi. Well, we were so young that like when you're young, young, like nine. You kind of just buy what people are buying. I know. You're like, all right, who do the blowfish it is or whatever. It was all word of mouth. It was all billboard. There was no internet. So my first three CDs. Oh, boy. Dookie. Oh, okay. Boys to Men 2. 
Yeah. Cranberries. Hey, two out of three ain't bad. Not bad. That's cranberries. They are killer. I, I still like them. I love the cranberries, but the cranberries were weird because zombie kicked so much zombie. ass. But that's, eh, eh, that's not really what they sound like. That was like their one heavy song. That was a big doozy. But yeah. they aren't that heavy. No, they were pretty uh, light and airy, but I like those too. You have to let it linger. Yeah, Dreams was fun. Dreams and, uh, was big. Very big. And, and Dookie Rules. My first three CDs were Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, Guns Ooh-wee. and Roses, and Billy Joel's Greatest Hits, Volume 1 and hey, 2. Hey, nothing wrong with that. And they were all killer, still pop all of those on. Yeah, those hold up. Sure, certainly. Well, you one's ever, a compilation, so of course. Yeah, you ever see his, his little drunk ass live? Who, Billy Joel? Yeah. Absolutely. When I did my Tonight Show, I emailed my agent and said, hey, can you get me some BJ tickets? And uh, we went. It was me and Greg Stone. We sat like eighth row. They were like what? the hookup WME tickets. So Garden? Beacon? At the Garden. Whoa. Yeah. It was like the 50th show or the 100th show, whatever. We uptown girled all night. It was quite a night. I love it. White bread world. Yeah. I, I saw him once. Bonnaroo of all places. Bonnaroo. Back when Bonnaroo allowed uh, guys like us to perform there. And it was like Kendrick Lamar, Alabama Shea. It was all these hip, you know, cool, young, sexy bands. And then Billy Joel closed it out. So I went and saw everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you go see Billy Joel and you're like, oh, this is why. He's a fucking legend. He's fun. Yeah, he was yeah. on top of the, the piano, just bebopping and scatting. It was wild. Yeah, he's a hit maker. By the way, Elton John playing the garden in a couple weeks, and I'm Ooh. gonna I'm gonna hit up the agent and say, hey, can you get me in there? I'd like to blow him. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, he's a he's a big gay, Sir Elton John. By the way, a lot of female gays coming up to me lately. The, I think the oh ladies are, are branching out into the the twos world. Well, I gotta tell you, I mean, the other day, two days ago, I was at the Fat Black. Fat Black. And uh, Sam and I were on the. It was the lineup was it was Sam Rill, me, Greg Stone, Louie. That was the four Woo! comics in a row. Four horse guns. It was quite a lineup, and they were hot too. And uh, Amy Blotnick was on too. I, I wasn't there when she was there, but she was hanging out upstairs. Great, great hang. Good egg. I like that blot. Very funny. And a beautiful lady, I might add. Sure. So we, I go, we go on. I watch Sam. I'm dying. He's got great stuff, of course. I go on, have a great set, and then Sam and I were out in the bar chatting, and then this like beautiful woman, I mean, like a stunner, like a stole cold stunner, walks by, and you know the kind of woman you're, you're having a conversation, you just do like the, oh yeah. Anyway, and then you keep talking. She comes out of the bathroom and goes, "Hey, Tuesday." No fucking. Queef. And I turned into like a child. I was like, well, you're the most, attru- what? You're a very pretty Tuesday. Blah. Like Sam was like, are you all right? Like he had to slap me around. I, I, was, I was shocked and chagrined. Or chagrined bad? I think chagrin might be bad. I was shocked and excited because, I mean, they, I, she was tall and all put together. I couldn't believe it. Yo, Marcus. Hey, I am just, uh, I'm floored. I'm flabbergasted. I'm, I'm flustered. I mean, you got to see this dame. I mean, it, it was wild. It was like, it was mysterious. I went back in the room and I was like looking for her. I was like, was that real? Did I imagine that? Did yeah. I call Sam at home and he had to tuck me in? I mean, <laughs> our, our, most of our fans look like Rick Moranis. This is so <laughs> nice to hear. I, I love hearing that. So, madam, if you, if you know who you are, you saw the guy at the Fat Black, you know who you are. You're a tall cup of handsome. Send us a photo. I want to see you. I, I, I felt like high school. I was like, uh, 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 th- th- thanks for listening, miss. <laughs> I, mean, this is, I mean, this was something else. She was a st- uh, stunner. I already used stunner. Ooh, she's a, a, a fox. Fox. Stone Cold Fox. Ah, sure. All you know, right. A wrestler. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Well, good good for the ladies out there. We're, we're branching out. I don't know what brought them in, but uh, I'll take them. We love you, ladies, and uh, we support, I believe, all the women. I always, I always, <laughs> I always worry they heard. <laughs> they heard like one episode, though, and they're like, hey, two's gay. And I'm like, how about that day when I, I, I shit in the girl's shoe? And she's like, like what? Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, then like, you lose them. Uh, never mind. How about this? You, you, you can't judge a, a queef by its... Smurf, but uh, I was I seen these apartments in Brooklyn as you do, uh-huh. and my realtor guy, who I'm sticking with, the main guy, got a lot of nice messages about real estate. All these people are like you got to stick with your guy. Fuck that slick Rick piece of shit. So Alan Edmonds, we're sticking with Ethan Allen. So uh, you know he shows you these nice places. We we go to one place. The the lady showing it, nice uh-huh. attractive older lady. Uh-huh. She's like, hey, I used to uh, a waitress at Caroline's. I go get out of here. No she's kidding. like, I saw everybody: Wanda Sykes, Jim Gaffigan, David Tell. And she's like, you're not gonna believe I used to bang. Uh-huh. And I was like, get out of here. And she gives me a little whisper. It's the filthiest man on the planet. So then you immediately just see her differently. 
So she whispered. She knows how to whisper. She knows she how to whisper. Yes. So she said, uh, Joe last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She said Bill Cosby. But yeah, so uh, it was fascinating because like, now I know so much about this guy. And then to know that she was plowing him, you're like, oh, you're a fucking animal. Yeah, that's fun. That's always a good uh, feeling. It's always weird when someone says they fuck someone because immediately... You go into that bedroom. Of course, of course. And she's a pantsuit wearing, like, shiny shoes, ponytail, clipboard, you know. Oh, the whole God. nine, like, upstanding citizen. You hear about that, you're like, oh, you're a fucking deviant. Well, that's my number one thing. I love a shiny shoe. A shoe just shining, a clipboard, a Put ponytail. Put it up my ass. Yes. Yeah, I just love that because that's the thing about sex is everyone sits in the library and calls their grandmother and reads the paper, and then all of a sudden they're like, tie me up, yes. you know, stick a fist in my ass. It's right. like the most exciting thing. Spit the, in my mouth, eat cum off my shoe. It's so true. It's, a, it's quite a shift. You know, everybody is on the up and up. Then once that bedroom door latches, it is put a lamp cord up my ass and plug it in. <laughs> Close doors, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that. You think about, you know, Michelle Obama's, like, oh. she's like, eat my ass out from behind, the whole thing. You oh, got boy, that right. Oh, boy, half clock again. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff. That's very exciting. Yeah, would you hear that whole thing about Nancy Reagan's, like the king of BJ's? Oh, I heard that, yeah. Something, yeah, everybody's, uh, everybody's a freak. Mother Teresa, I'm sure, was getting pegged by six guys and uh, had a cock her mouth and dick and ass and you know she was a giver she was very generous wasn't she a priest i thought they couldn't touch anything Uh, i'm sure she dabbled you know didn't i think some people hate mother Teresa. there's like people that are like hey now she stinks well if she's a mother she has kids so she somebody (laughs) somebody railed her that's a good point wow there's mary mother mary comes to me didn't she was the virgin lady immaculate conception yeah that's right i don't buy it she's a whore i've never heard anything like that happening. But your whisper thing is big because it makes you appreciate the first guy who came up with, where'd you learn to whisper, a helicopter? Mm-hmm. Which I know is like a hack stock line, but the first time that guy told that, that must have been, the roof must have just shit blood. Did DePaulo write that? I think DePaulo might have no. wrote that. I think, maybe. What? I mean, he did it. I think he said Fallujah. <laughs> That's even you funnier. Learn how to whisper Fallujah, yeah. Fallujah is the funniest word on the planet. It's very good. I switched it over to because uh, I didn't want to steal the line, so I said, "Where'd you gotta l- learn how to whisper an orgy?" Which doesn't really make sense, but it kills. Interesting. Well, an orgy, you can whisper though. You lean in, and go, you know, come in my ass. I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I picture orgy. I picture it very uh, body, shouty. And yelly, shouty. Is like, body body noise though? No, I just body want to, I want to use body. What does body mean? I think it means like uh, showy, ah. very body, very gaudy. Maybe I think of gaudy. Hmm. I thought body was like your arms and legs and torso all together as one. Ah, all right. yes. All right. Sorry. The human body. But yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, an orgy. I picture like the stock market where everybody's like, woo, ah, buy now, sell low. But yeah, I love the idea of an orgy. I wish you had that men in black thing where they... Because ah. you think when you think about you think about it, you jerk off and you think like it'd be so fun if like the New York Knicks were at my house and we were all fucking my aunt. Yes. But then when it comes time to apply it, you're like, no, I can't do that. It's right. like the Seinfeld thing. I'm not an orgy guy. Right, exactly. Thick carpeting and weirdo lighting. I, it's but you're just in your mind. You're just like, please, like I, I want to blow the Miami Heat while <laughs> you know Melissa Etheridge plays or sure, you, sure. But if that happened, you'd Come be like, my get out of here. I can't. Do <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get it. But it's like your, your joke about the dirty talk. In the middle of it, you're like, ah, put it in my ass, peck yeah. me, fatty. And then later, you're like, ah, that was weird. Now we're eating cereal and watching L.A. Law. Exactly. It's so hard. I always thought that with like threesomes. It's so weird to be like, okay, take care, Eric. That was fun. <laughs> you know? It's like, how do you do that? I've had a cut. It's not bad. Uh, but you're not in a relationship with either of them. No, God, I'm talking no. married. I'm talking we bring over, you know, Bethany to come eat my wife out while sure. I'm sitting on her face. Send but me you the video. Like, take care, Sue. We'll see you at the. Uh, I think there's women for that. The they, they, you call them up. You have a red phone. They answer it. They go, "I'll see you there." I mean, there's men for that. Uh, I know a guy, Philip. He'd be great. <laughs> Philip with one L. Phil Hanley. By the way, Phil Hanley is the only guy I know. He's got COVID for like six months. I know. He's got he's, COVID lung. He's a delicate flower, that guy. <laughs> but uh, I think he's back. He did a set last night. Oh, he did? Okay, yeah, I haven't so seen he's, him he's since around. 85, and I haven't talked to him. I'm just hearing from people. COVID has taken on some people. I thought it was a hoax this whole time, and then a couple <laughs> people are just dropping like flies. They're, they're, they're off in an incubator in Kuwait. 
<laughs> well, I mean, Rana and Hershberg, my upstairs roommate, family hang, come on over. Uh, apparently, it's a hot hang. It's big over there. I don't the know hill. about the Siobhan character. He's, he's, he's on my turf. <laughs> we all, Everyone came up and watched The Sixth Sense the other day. What? Who picked that one? Wow, we had to talk about it for the podcast. I trashed uh, the hell out of that. People yeah, I don't, get very I don't upset. see gay people. Uh, who cares about that movie? But people get very upset. You make fun of a movie. They're like, you're a piece of shit. Your movie better be brilliant. You suck my dick. Your podcast sucks. And I'm like, I didn't care for the film. What do you want? Yeah. Also, uh, that film fucked America because it, it made us think M. Night Shyamalan was talented. Yeah. And then we just had a slew of horse shit on a conveyor belt back to back <laughs> all day long with the, the, the village people, signs. Uh, sign wasn't bad, I guess. Uh, I didn't care for it. But check out the podcast, the Joe water. and Rana on Talk Movies. We really trash it. But what was I say? Oh, the family hang. But uh, Steve Rogers has a popcorn machine. The whole apartment smells like popcorn. You got to come over. Wee. We got popcorn. But Ron has uh, has uh, what do you call it? COVID right AIDS. now. Oh yeah. And he's fine. I saw him. You know, the other day he was at a bar. You know, gallivanting, and he said, "I feel great." They say the best uh, medicine medicine is laughter. But I think for AIDS, it's uh, not a COVID. It's fucking getting it, and once you got it, you're golden. Right, but some people have had it hard, I guess. But um, but he's doing fine. I, my point is, he's a you know a, a neurotic Jew sure. with a limp, and yeah, uh, that's a bad combo. <laughs> he's just uh, it's not a limp. He just lumbers. He lumbers. He's a lumberer. He's got. His, it feels like he's uh, his legs aren't uh, all the way attached to him. It feels like someone's <laughs> controlling him a little bit. They're flowing. I feel like he's not going to care for this. No, nah, well, he's a funny guy. He's got a nice beard. He's got a great hairline. Maybe the best hairline in comedy. Well, he's a handsome guy. Wow, let's not get crazy. He really is. He's a handsome guy. He's got that dark skin. He's very tan. Tan. And smart as a whip. I wish I was as smart as him. This guy reads in the tub, and he's a uh, you know, brilliant comic. Oh, God, him in the tub is terrifying well he's very very smart very funny very and smart. attractive and does well with the ladies well you know he's a smart funny guy you, know, you, can, you can clean up if, you, if you're not really making it up in the uh looks you can you can pick it up on the back end yeah he's got a lot going on for him but it's just a noisy walk is all but anyways he's got COVID. he's doing fine all right great i think it's very livable you saw denmark pulled all the restrictions and england pulled england. the restrictions i yeah. think we're getting out of this thing it's it beat uh, Tom Brady. Oh, yeah, Brady. He, he he called it quits before COVID. He quit like twice. Shelby, look upset. What happened? Oh, God. Yeah, I, thought, I thought that we lost the whole tape. Oh, Jesus. That would be something. Some of the, sometimes I look over. Shelby just looks like he's uh, livid with us. I know. Well, that's what I, I pray to God that you're not the consensus for the entire audience. Oh, my god. Because all we have to go off of is your mug. We'd have zero listeners. Oh, yeah. No ladies. No hot ladies. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Send me that photo, sister. Yeah, I mean, this, this is really a knockout. But then it's going to be awkward. She's like, I'm the hot lady. Here you go. I'm calling myself the hot one. Right. But yeah, wow, she's the one lady I talked to at Fat Black on that Tuesday night with that lineup. There you go. So you can't, uh, you, you can't mistake it. It's but you. It, it was dim lighting. I mean, what if oh, she sends it and we're like, Jesus Christ. She, she looks could be like, a two-faced. Yeah, she looks like me. Right. <laughs> we don't, yeah, don't send us a, a Louis Anderson photo. Well, you gotta, go, we gotta get we, some dates. We gotta wrap up uh, dates, but yeah, you gotta come over and, and check out Andrew Savone, Steve uh, Rogers, Caitlin Palufo, Sarah, and uh, who's the other one? Ron uh, and, and Senya. That's quite a uh, quite a lineup you got over there. It's a hell of a house. Uh, it's a it's a great great time, great hang. Uh, you know what it is? It's that classic old school hang where Ron and he goes out, he buys a salad, he goes, "Hey, I just got a salad. Should I stop by?" I go, "Come over. We eat together for like a half hour." And you go, "I'll see you later." Beautiful. Those are those great hangs that I miss. I mean, like I used to go to the bank with Tom Dustin. We'd go get coffee together. Right. It's nice to have somebody next door. It is, and we need that interaction because all we do is sit on our phones and tweet and twit and all this other horse shit and uh, you're connected to uh, the whole world but yet so unconnected to people. This is what worries me about you moving to Brooklyn. Your guy's going to be wearing skinny pants and a fedora. Oh, no, will say retard. He'll kill call the police. I it know. won't last. Uh, your Siobhan is going to be, uh, you know, I don't even want to name anybody but if I come over there and you're uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I know, I'm right by Spike Lee's joint. I might become like a BLM activist. Oh, geez, Spike Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, check out Joe and Ron on Talk Movies. Hey, uh, Saturday, February 19th, Atlantic City Comedy Club. Is anybody Ooh, listening? Good luck. <laughs> 
after Good that. luck. I'd You're going to be a different guy after I'd that one. I'd love anybody to come to that for the love of Pete. Not one person has written been like, I can't wait for AC. Oh, yeah. AOC. She's a little off putting, you know? Yeah, I think she's attractive, but uh, yeah. imagine dating that. All right, Key West, February 24, 25, 26. Come on down, Tom Dustin, Sarah Talamash, myself, Key West. Make the trip down. Back in Fort Worth, uh, Texas, Hyenas, March 4th and 5th. Wee! Then Side Splitters, March 24, 25, 26. you got to come to that one. My favorite room ever, for God's sakes. Hell yeah. Come down to that. Laugh Boston, April 14th through the 16th. Helium Buffalo, April 21st to the 23rd. Oh, I can't forget Houston. That's a one night only. O-T-O-T-O. One time. One time only. Houston Secret Group, February 15th. Back in the uh, Pacific Northwest, Tacoma, May 30th. Come on that. And I, I updated my website. Oh, is that right? Yes. I, I mean, updated my dates, I mean. Oh, and, good. And uh, put the special up there. Please subscribe to my... I want to get above 20,000 YouTube subscribers before the special. So get on there. I'm getting close. You're about to hit six Check mil on the uh, hate myself. I think it might happen today. ooh Very exciting. That's lunch. <laughs> I, I'm at the Omaha Funny Bone this weekend. Love Omaha. Get a steak. See a show. Columbus Funny Bone after that. Love Columbus, probably my favorite town in Ohio. Summit Comedy Club in Fort Wayne. I'm not sure if that's still on the books. La Jolla, California. Side Splitters in Tampa with my old pal Sean Murphy. Funny Bone, Cincinnati. Louisville, Kentucky. Dania Improv in Lower Florida. Indianapolis Helium with Umar. Carolina Theater in Raleigh. Stand Up Live in Phoenix. Calusa Casino in California. Magoobies in Baltimore. Addison Improv. A lot of fun dates. Out to lunch. Check out the stand-ups on Netflix. We got two seasons covering. And uh, check out We Might Be Drunk with Sam. I got All Over the Road podcast. And uh, yeah, praise Allah. Get on the Patreon. Get some merch. We got Greg merch cooking. Shelby's out there slinging shirts. You don't want to be uh, the weirdo at, at the at the live show without the merch on, so get a shirt. Come on by. Do we plug the live date? Oh, good call. February, March. March, uh, what is that? March, Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. It's I believe March. it's March 20... 22nd. 22nd. March 22nd. Live Tuesdays with stories at the Fat Black Pussycat. Which, by the way, you got to get the tickets because the room holds about eighty people. I know we're gonna sell that puppy out. Bring the ladies, bring the gays, bring the the queefs. Oh yeah, that that beautiful lady. Oh She's yeah, she before. already saw you there. Same room. Uh, so Fat Black. Uh, yeah, March. Whatever we already just said. We gotta and, get that uh, up on the website. Patreon is insane. Oh we yeah, got crazy Booming. shit going on. So fun. All right, Jordan's right. saying cut it. Thank you. Praise Allah. <laughs>